hi everyone you welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on the notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials so this is a requested tutorial on how to make a blazer dress and for this blazer there will be an half cut so the name of the fabric i used is an ankara print fabric and these are the essential measurements i need for the upper parts of the blazer this is the shoulder measurements the bust measurements the waist measurements the shoulder to waist line and then the ham hole measurement and since this is a blazer it won't be having a zipper at the center back so let's start by cutting out the back piece now i folded the fabric into two to know the wideness of the fold you divide the bust circumference by four plus five inches to an allowance to that the first step is to mark the starting line and this starting line will serve as the shoulder line of the blazer the next step is to mark the neck measurements the neck width is three inches while the neck depth is 1.5 inches you should connect the two points together to form a curved neckline the next step is to mark the shoulder measurements the shoulder measurement is 14 inches i divided by two which made it seven inches plus a half inch sewing allowance which made it 7.5 inches altogether now on the 7.5 inches i'll place my tape below that point to mark one inch to connect it to the neck width to form the shoulder slope and on the tip of the shoulder slope, I'll place the tape vertically to mark the round arm hole. A round arm hole is 14 inches. I divided by 2, which is 7 inches, to connect this point vertically to the tip of the shoulder slope as shown. And this vertical line will be called the arm hole line. The next step is to extend this point horizontally as shown. And this line will be called the bust line. So I went ahead to place my tape vertically starting from the shoulder line to mark the half length of the blazer. The half length of the blazer is 15 inches. And I also added 2 inches to an allowance to the length which made it 17 inches. So after sewing the upper part, you can trim it back to the 15 inches. Alright, the next step is to get the armhole curve. To achieve this, you place your tape on the armhole line to mark the midpoint. Then you can use a curve ruler or a freehand method to make the arm hole curve as shown. To get a proper fitting on the back piece of the blazer, you need to take note of some important darts. The first dart will be from the center fold. So on this point, I'm going to mark half inch and I'll place my tape vertically starting from the shoulder line. To mark about 5 inches to connect this point to the other points as shown. the next step is to take the regular waist dart so to get your waist dart you divide the bust pan into two the bust pan is six inches divided by two which is three inches plus half inch sewing allowance that'll be 3.5 inches instead of placing the tape starting from the fold you place it from this new vertical line which is on the center fold to mark 3.5 inches now i'll also mark 3.5 inches on the m line as shown to connect these two points together the next step is to place the measuring tape on the dart line so mark the midpoint now on this midpoint i'll mark half inch on both sides to connect it to this tip and to also extend this point vertically downwards as shown all right guys so these are the essential darts you need for the back piece of the blazer now the next step is to place the body measurements on the bust line i'll place the bust circumference divided by four inches starting from the darts which is close to the center fold then I also added 2 inches to an allowance to the side. On the waistline, I'll place the waist circumference divided by 4, which is 6.5 inches. And for the dart spacing, which is 1 inch, I'll replace this by the side of the waist circumference. Alright, so I've marked that. And since I used the 2 inches to an allowance to the side of the bust circumference, I also marked 2 inches to an allowance to the waist circumference to connect the two points together. The next step is to add half inch sewing allowance to the top of the shoulder slope to which it will be attached to the other shoulder of the front piece. 
and this is all for the back piece The next step is to cut the front piece. For the front piece, I folded the fabric into two. To know the wideness of the folded fabric you need, you divide the bust circumference by 4 plus 10 inches to an allowance to the side. So at this stage, I will urge you to kindly pay attention so you don't get confused because the front piece is quite technical. So because there is a collar, you need to place your tape vertically as shown to mark about 6 inches and this line upward will be for the collar. The next step is to place the tape horizontally from the fold to mark 5 inches and also from this new vertical line to the fold will be for the lapel. This top part is for the collar why this other side is for the lapel the next step is to clean this extended line now i'll be placing all measurements inside this box so let's get started the neck depth is three inches and the neck width i'll be working with is also three inches now i will connect both points together to form a curved neckline the next step is to place the shoulder measurements the shoulder is seven inches plus half inch to an allowance that'll be 7.5 inches now on this point i went down by one inch to connect it to the neck width to form the shoulder slope now I went ahead to place the tape vertically from the tip of the shoulder slope to mark the arm or circumference divided by 2 which is 7 inches. The next step is to extend this point in form of an horizontal line and this will be the bust line. Now I'll place the tape vertically from the shoulder line to mark the half length of the dress. The half length is 15 inches. I added 2 inches to an allowance which made it 17 inches altogether. Now I'll place my tape on the armhole line to get the midpoint. And since this is for the front piece, I'll go in from this midpoint by a quarter of an inch to connect it to the tip of the shoulder slope and to also connect it to the bust line in form of a curve. And the essence of reducing the armhole to quarter of an inch is because this will help you eliminate any excess fold from the armhole due to the bust. The next step is to mark the waist that to achieve this you divide the bust span into two plus half inch to an allowance and that is 3.5 inches so I placed my tape on the M line to mark 3.5 inches and I also placed my tape on the bust line to mark 3.5 inches to connect these points together in form of a straight line. The next step is to mark 2 inches below this point. Now I'll go ahead to mark half inch on both sides as shown. To connect the three points together. Now on the bust line, I'll place the bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches to an allowance by the side. And on the waistline, I'll divide the waist circumference by 4, then take 1 inch sewing allowance to place it by the side from this that spacing, then also 2 inches for the sewing allowance to connect the two points together. And this is just a basic bodice. Alright, the next step is on how to make the lapel. From the neck depth, I'll be extending this line to about 1 inch. And on the M line, I'll also extend the line to one inch to connect the two points together as shown. Now I place the tape on the shoulder line to mark where I want the end of the lapel to stop. So this would be directly on the waistline, and the waistline is 15 inches which is the half length of the dress and that is exactly where the button will be attached to. The next step is to connect this point to the neck width. I 
At this stage, you need to take the measurements of how wide you want the lapel to be. And this measurement is taken by placing your tape directly on the neck depth line, starting from this new slant line as shown. So you can see where I placed my tape. And the wideness of the lapel I'll be working with is 4.5 inches. To extend the neck depth to these new points, and to also use a straight ruler to connect these points to the points I marked for the button. If you're able to understand the tutorial to this point, you realize that it's very easy to make a lapel. But notwithstanding, I'll be making different tutorials on how to make lapels so that you can get familiar with it using different approach and methods. The next step is on how to make the collar for the lapel. And the name of the collar we'll be making is called a notched collar. So this is the back piece. I took the measurements of the neckline and what I have here is 4 inches. So I'll be working with 4 inches to achieve the collar. The next step is to place the tape vertically starting from the neck width to mark 4 inches. Now I placed my tape horizontally to mark half inch after that point. In order not to get confused, I need to clean the first point I marked because I only used it as a guide in getting a slant line. Now I'll connect the neck width to this point as shown. The next step is to place the tape horizontally from this point to also mark 4 inches. And on these 4 inches points, I'll place my tape above it to mark half inch. Then also clean the first points which I used as a guide to connect these two points together. Recall I said that this is a notch collar. So in this case, you need to place your tape at the edge of the lapel as shown to mark half inch. Just make sure that the distance between these two points is half inch. And this new point should be connected to this point here. Now the final step is to close the collar by connecting these two points together. The next step is to trim out the front piece as shown. And since we added half inch to the top of the shoulder slope on the back piece, you need to also add half an inch sewing allowance to the top of the shoulder slope on the front piece. This is the lapel. And this is for the collar. This half cut blazer is very important because you can use it to make any style. The upper part can just be the half cut, while the lower part can be a gathers gown attached to it, a pleated gown attached to it, or even a jumpsuit. It just depends on how you want to style yours. But based on request, this would be a fitted blazer dress. And after sewing the upper part of the blazer, this is how it should be. And the next tutorial I'll be uploading is on how I made this blazer. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss this tutorial. For the lower part of the blazer, which is for the skirt, these are the essential measurements I'll be working with. The waist circumference, the hip circumference, the shoulder to hip, and the length of the gown. The first step is to fold the fabric into two. And since the half length of the dress is 15 inches, all you have to do is to subtract 15 inches from the top of the fabric as shown obviously you can see that the waistline is on 15 inches and i also added half inch to an allowance to the top to which it will be used in attaching it back to the half length of the blazer all right the next step is to mark the shoulder to the hip line which is 25 inches now i'll also go ahead to mark the measurement taken from the shoulder to the full length of the blazer which is 32 inches. I added 2 inches to an allowance to that, which made it 34 inches altogether. So, this is the waistline, the hip line, and the full length of the dress. The next step is to place your tape 
on the waistline to mark the waist circumference divided by four plus half inch sewing allowance for the darts and that will be seven inches now i added two inches sewing allowance to the side on the hip line i'll divide the hip circumference by four plus two inches sewing allowance to the side to connect the hip point to the waist point as shown to get the measurement on the m line you subtract six inches from the hip circumference the hip circumference is 36 if you subtract six inches that will be 30 inches and since the m circumference is now 30 inches you have to divide by four which will be 7.5 inches and i also added two inches to an allowance to the side to connect the points to the hip points as shown please take note that this is for the back piece of the skirt The next step is to mark the dart. The dart is the bust span divided by 2, which is 3 inches. I added half inch to that, which made 3.5 inches. The next step is to extend this point vertically downwards to about 5 inches. So this will be the length of the dart line. Now, on this point, I'm going to mark half inch on both sides to connect it to the end of the dart line as shown. So this is going to be the dart for the back piece. For the front part of the skirt, I folded the fabric into two. Then I went ahead to place the back piece on it. Remember that there is no zipper allowance since it's a blazer. So I'll be cutting out exactly the same piece. The difference between the front piece and the back piece is that the front piece will be slitted open in the center fold as shown all right guys this is all for the cutting of the skirt and after the skirt is sewn this is the final outcome all right so let's go ahead to make the sleeve when making a sleeve for a blazer you need to be intentional about it because it isn't like a regular sleeve the only difference is that the cap sleeve is deeper so the length of the sleeve is 23 inches and i marked the upper part of the sleeve to which it to be attached to the ham hole of the blazer after that i added half inch sewing allowance to the top of this line all right so like i said when making a blazer the cap sleeve is really deeper than the actual sleeve or the regular sleeve you make so the cap sleeve i'll be working with for this blazer is seven inches and the reason why it's preferable for the cap sleeve to be deeper is because there's this final outcome it gives after you've worn it it gives you this um standing effect on the sleeve making it look like a suit sleeve so at this point i am done sewing the dress so i went ahead to measure the ham o i have on the dress this is 8.5 inches and then i placed 8.5 inches directly on the cap sleeve line then i extended this point to the tip of the starting line i got the midpoint of the slant line i marked half inch above the midpoint to connect it to the tip of the starting line as shown then i went below this side of the slant line to connect it to the end of the cap sleeve measurements please take note that on that cap sleeve measurements i didn't add any sewing allowance because adding a sewing allowance will just increase the arm o and to be sure we're on the right track since the arm o is 8.5 inch i placed it on the arm o curve and you can see that i have about two inches sewing allowance to that and the reason why the allowance was there automatically is because of how deep the cap sleeve was the next step is to mark the length of the sleeve when it's on 14 inches so when the sleeve length is on 14 inches around sleeve is 10 inches i divided it by two and that was five inches now i added about two inches sewing allowance to the side And when the length of the sleeve is on 23 inches the wrist measurement is 7 inches i divided by 2 and i have 3.5 inches
plus a two inches sewing allowance to the side so this is all for this sleeve now you should cut it and also place it on a fabric to cut out the second sleeve all right thanks for watching to the very end and i hope this tutorial was helpful i'll be dropping the link in the description box on how the blazer was sewn so kindly subscribe to my channel to be notified when i upload new tutorials thank you